he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame even when we were dead in trespasses he made us alive so put on the new man let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil i am an ambassador in chains that in it i may speak boldly Greetings to another episode of Living Strong. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, we count it a joy and privilege to come your way uh, and share, this, share the Word of God with you. Uh, today will be our concluding message in this series of uh, studying through the book of Ephesians. And we pick up today in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, starting from verse 10. Paul has... Uh, uh, address the life of the believer uh, in the previous uh, verses and previous passages, talking about their everyday, everyday life uh, choices, uh, learning to walk in the fullness of the Spirit, and uh, learning to let every relationship be in order the way Christ would want it to be. And then as he concludes his message to the Ephesians, he brings their attention to another aspect, another dimension, an important dimension of the Christian life. And that has to do with being in conflict, being strong in God so that we can stand up in the midst of conflict against the powers of darkness. So he says in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's very interesting in this one verse that he uses several different words that talk about power and uh, uh, strength and force. And what he's actually saying is be strong in the law. That means all this comes from God, but what comes from Him actually changes us. And in what way would it change us? When you look at the Greek there, be strong, meaning he's saying derive dunamo or explosive power. So you derive explosive power from God, and then the, be strong in the Lord and in the power. That Greek word there is kratos, which is visibly demonstrated power. And then he says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Might talking about physical force or strength. So he's saying as believers, we draw strength from God. We draw this uh, uh, power, explosive power, visibly demonstrable power, and might or force that comes from God imbues our very own being. So he says, you strengthen yourself in God. You draw strength from God. This is what is available to you and me in God that can fill our beings. Now, why do we need to do that? Because then he progresses on to tell us in verse 11 onwards about our spiritual conflict. So in verse 11, he says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, before I can put the armor on, I need to be strong myself. And that's verse 10. Make sure you are strong, physically fit. So you can imagine the picture of a soldier. If a soldier himself is weak, no matter how, you know, if he takes all the pieces of his armor, but if he himself is weak, uh, 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 the armor is really not going to do much good. So first, you need the person behind the armor really strong. That's verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, having strengthened yourself in God, having drawn strength from God through your relationship with Him, He says, now you put on the full armor of God. So now you've got your weapons on. You've got the armor on. And when you have the whole armor of God, He says, you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So the devil, meaning Satan and all of his demonic forces, will come against the believer. The believer is in a time of conflict. So although we are saved, we are still in this earth, we are still in this realm where there is conflict between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. And we are part of the kingdom of God. We are engaged in conflict with the kingdom of darkness. 
And he says, there will be this conflict, but if you are strong in the Lord, you've got your armor on, you will be able to stand. You don't have to collapse. You don't have to be beaten down. You don't have to live a life of de uh, defeat. And you don't have to be overcome by the adversary. But rather, you can stand against all the wiles of the devil. The wiles there is simply really talking about mind games, the, the, the schemes, the mind games of the devil, the strategies of the devil. He says, no matter what strategy, what mind game he has, you will be able to stand. And he says, put on the whole armor. So putting on is something we have to do. God won't do it for us. He's given the armor to us, but I've got to take every piece of the armor, make sure that I'm walking under the whole armor of God. So put on the whole armor of God. And then in the next few verses, Paul uh, begins to describe this armor. Of course, he is drawing from the pieces of armor that a ro typical Roman soldier would have on as he went out into con combat. And so he draws from those pieces of armor and he refers to the believer and he says, you've got to have each of these pieces on as you engage in conflict. So uh, let's look at each of these uh, verses there. In verse 12, Ephesians 6, verse 12, he says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So then he begins to say, look, our conflict is not with other people. We are not fighting other, other human beings. But we are engaged in a spiritual conflict with the powers of darkness. And then he begins to describe Satan's hierarchy. There are principalities. Principalities refer to chief or the highest ranking uh, uh, po demonic powers who've been there from ancient times. He says there are principalities. Then there are powers. Powers are demonic beings. They derive their power from the chiefs, from the principalities. So they have delegated power. And then you have rulers. Rulers is referring to a level in Satan's army that, uh, that, that oversees several demonic spirits under them. So it's talking about a very organized system. World rulers. They have authority over regions of the earth. And under them are spirits of wickedness, many, many spirits, evil spirits, carrying out uh, whatever Satan intends, whatever the devil intends across the world. So there is the devil, and he's got principalities under him. He's got uh, powers under him. He's got world rulers under that. And there are these wicked spirits. So, the, so Paul is saying, look, we are in a spiritual conflict. We are working against a very organized enemy. Uh, we are working against an enemy that has strategies and schemes. And so we've got to be strong in the Lord. We've got to take on the full armor of God. And if we do that, we can definitely stand up against all of these things. Then from verse 13, he begins to take, describe each piece of the armor, which is what we're going to do now. He says, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Once again saying, look, you take on the whole armor, the evil day will come. That means the worst day you will ever face. Those times will come, but you can still keep standing. You don't have to quit. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So he talks about the belt of truth. Now the belt was a very important piece of armor. It was actually the one that you wore at the very end, and, uh, and Paul mentions it at the very beginning in contrast. And uh, the belt is what held all the other part pieces of the armor. It held the breastplate in its place and, and it kept it all uh, together. So belt was very important. It was on the belt that the Roman soldier would hang his shield when not in use. He would also hang his sword when not in use. He, al he also had a pouch where he would keep other small items. Uh, he had that. All of that was on the belt. And the belt was very important. And Paul says, truth is our belt. Truth. Truth meaning God's truth. All of these things come from God. This is, uh, these weapons are God-given, so we put them all in the context of what comes from God. God tells us His Word is truth. So the belt of truth telling us that we need to have a strong grip on the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God. We need to be strong, deeply rooted in the truth, in the word of God. Thy word 
is truth. Be established in it. Walk in truth. That it is on the, the word of God that the other pieces of armor rest. The, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. They all depend on this belt that we are, we are wearing. That means us being established in the truth of the word of God. And then he says, take on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, the breastplate was the heaviest piece of armor that was made of metal that covered the front and the back and that had hinges that covered the shoulders. And so they're really heavy. And then it came down through the belt and then it came out. Uh, the lower part was, was, uh, was almost like a skirt uh, coming out from beneath the belt. But the top part was the very important part. It covered the very important, the entire body of the soldier the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness has twofold meaning in the New Testament. One, righteousness given to us as a gift. That means we have been given the gift of righteousness. We stand before God righteous. Now, you, you and I need to be established in that, to know that we are the righteousness of God. We stand before God justified, acquitted, made right in His sight. Righteousness also means that we walk in righteousness. We walk pleasing to God. We walk in right standing with God. So it's a twofold meaning there. So it says, have on the breastplate of righteousness, meaning you walking in righteousness is going to protect the entire part of your body, your, your, uh, your front and your back. Knowing who you are in Christ and walking in righteousness is your protection from the enemy. Verse 15, he says, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So he says, put on your shoes, which is the gospel of peace. Now the shoes which the Roman soldier wore were of course made of metal, and they had two parts to it. The first part of the metal covered the shin, so it went on from the top of the knee all the way down to the ankle. It was a metal plate that protected the front of his legs. The second part, of course, was the metal shoe that he wore. But these were no ordinary shoes because these shoes had spikes at the bottom. So the spikes served two purposes. Of course, it gave him a firm footing. No matter what terrain he walked on, it would, uh, would dig into the ground and give him, uh, help him be very strong and stable. But the spikes on the shoe were also used to inflict injury to a fallen enemy. So if the enemy falls down, they would trample over them. Now that was fierce, but they would trample over the enemy with those spiked shoes. So the, the shoes were not only meant to protect, but they were also used to inflict injury. They were also used in some way as a weapon of offense uh, against the enemy. And he says, the gospel of peace is the, our shoes. The gospel being ready to share the gospel. Now, Paul in his epistles refers to the gospel of Jesus Christ in many different ways. One of them, he, he refers to it as the gospel of peace, meaning it's the good news of, of Jesus Christ. And he says this, the shoes are the gospel of peace. As believers, we must be ready to share the good news of Jesus with other people. That's our shoe. And every time we, we do that, we are like a soldier who's protected in his feet. Now, imagine if a soldier is not protected on his feet. Uh, he doesn't have his shoes on. He can't move fast. He may have other pieces of his armor on, but he really can't do much because he can't move. He's also very vulnerable. If he gets crippled on his legs by one strike of the enemy, he's fallen. So it's so important for you and me to walk in readiness with the gospel, the readiness and unashamedness with the gospel, to share the gospel. And every time we share the gospel, we are moving against the enemy. We are inflicting injury to the enemy. And then he says in verse 16, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, the shield, the sold, Roman soldier typically had two shields. One was a decorative shield, which was a round, small shield, but that was for decorative purposes. They would use it in their march past and so on. But the shield that they, they used uh, in combat was a huge shield. It was a shield almost the full length of the soldier himself. It was, had a metal frame and a metal bar that they could hold onto it, but the shield itself was made of thick leather, several layers of leather 
stitched together that made up the shield. The shield had to be maintained because the leather would otherwise become brittle and it would easily give way. So every day, the soldier had to take care of the shield. He had to massage or oil, rub oil into that leather to keep it uh, strong. And also before the day of combat, they would soak their shield in water so that when they go out, this damp shield would quench the fiery darts that were fired by the enemy. So that's what Paul is referring to, take the shield of faith. So faith is like that shield. Our faith in God, our strong faith in God will quench all the fiery darts. No matter what the enemy throws up against you, when you stand firm in faith, those fiery darts will be nullified, will be put aside. They will fall by the wayside powerless. But your, your, your faith has to be maintained on a daily basis. You keep your faith in good shape by rubbing in the oil of the Spirit of God and by soaking your faith in the Word of God. The Spirit and the Word are needed to keep your faith strong. Another aspect of the shield that was used by the Roman soldiers was these shields on the metal side, they had hooks so that soldiers could come together and they could hook their shields together, make like a strong wall and then and cover their top and their front and then advance in a group against the enemy. So the shield was not only used as a weapon to defend themselves, but it was also used in a way to march in alignment against the enemy when they got all the shields together protecting them. It would be somewhat like an armored tank of modern day. So the shield, when we, when we join faith together with other believers, can be a weapon of offense against the enemy. And then he says, verse 17, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, the helmet is a very important piece of armor. You know, if without the helmet, the enemy has to deal one fatal blow to the head and the soldier is gone. It can be just easily decapitated. So that helmet, what is it? It is the helmet of salvation. You knowing and being assured of your salvation, knowing that you are saved, knowing what belongs to you because you are saved, is so important. And that helmet protects your mind. Very important. Face, the front and the back, protects your mind. So that's where the enemy deals, his, tries to deal his fatal blows in the mind. The thoughts, the ideas, the reasonings, the imaginations, those are the weapons the enemy uses against the Christian's mind, trying to decapitate the Christian with one blow. But when the Christian, when a believer is firm in their salvation, they know what their salvation is, they know the blessings that come to their life because they are saved. They've got the helmet on. So no matter what thought, no matter what reasoning, no matter what imagination comes to their mind, they are secure. And then he says, take the sword, which is the word of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So God's word that you speak out of your mouth, the word of God that you release with your mouth, you declare with your mouth, that's your sword. And it says it's a sword of the spirit. That means you use it but the Holy Spirit goes up against the enemy. When you speak the word of God out of your mouth against the enemy, the spirit of God goes up against the devil. So that's a very powerful weapon. Learn to speak, learn to declare what the word of God says about you, about your life, about your circumstances. Use the word of God as your sword against the enemy. And finally, he talks about verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So this is important. He says, all of this is undergirded with prayer. You pray, you engage in prayer in the Spirit. And I understand this from Paul's writings to mean to pray in tongues, to pray in the Spirit. He says, you pray in tongues, you pray in the Spirit, you pray for all saints. And that, that will, uh, that's again an important part of our armor. And I'll just read the final verses as Paul Closes off his epistle to the Ephesians. He says, You pray for me as well, and that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. It's very interesting. First of all, we learn that we must pray for other ministers of God. And uh, imagine Paul's situation. He's right now imprisoned, yet he's asking for believers to pray for him that he can still speak boldly, he can still preach the gospel boldly, even though he is in chains. Which means that no matter what situation we are in, 
we need to share Jesus Christ. And Paul is eager to do that. And he's praying for the, he's asking the saints to pray for him. And then he closes off saying, but that you may also know my affairs and how I'm doing. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you, whom I have sent to you for this very purpose, that you may know our affairs and that he may comfort your hearts. Peace to the brethren and love and with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all those who love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. So Paul obviously is sending Tychicus, who's been with him in Rome. He's sending him over to the Ephesians. Possibly Tychicus is carrying this letter, this epistle to the Ephesians. And Paul signs off with his customary blessing of grace and peace and, uh, from the Lord Jesus Christ to the saints in Ephesus. Hi there, we're just delighted to introduce to you our free church app. The main highlight of our church app is what we call the toolkit, which has eight powerful sections filled with the Word of God for you. We have a section called Gospel with tools to help you share the gospel with your friends. We give you videos. We have a section called Reasons, where we provide answers for commonly asked questions that you might encounter. And people ask you, how do you know that God exists? How do you know that God created everything? Why do you believe Jesus Christ is unique? And so on. Questions that you need, that you will face, and there are answers there. We have a section called Faith Builders, where we list scriptures on various areas of the Christian life to help build your faith and make your declaration and act on the Word of God. We have a section called Identity, where we give you all the scriptures that you need to know to establish your personal identity of who you are in Christ. We firmly believe that who you are in Christ is who you really are. Uh, there's a section called On How To, where we give you instructions or guidelines on how to do various aspects of ministry. How do you minister healing? How do you minister deliverance? How do you lead somebody into the baptism of the Holy Spirit and several other areas that you would encounter in ministry? We have a section called Group Study Guides, where we give you several guides to be used in small groups to study the Word of God together on various topics and themes, and this, this will keep on growing. We have a section called Principles, where we give you the Word of God to help you uh, make right choices and decisions as you encounter various scenarios in everyday life. And then we have a section called Lifestyle, uh, where it tells you the, what the Bible says on various issues that you may face in life. And so this toolkit is something that's really important that you'll keep coming back using almost on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition to the toolkit, we of course have all our sermons available to you, the audio, the video, the sermon notes, and the series. We have our TV programs available on the app so that you can watch it anywhere, on demand, anytime. We have our worship videos so that you can listen to uplifting worship music from our worship band. We have all our books available so you can read the books on your mobile device. And of course, we have the ability to connect to our services live from wherever you are in the world. So make sure you head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore, download the app right away. Enjoy the journey. I'm sure it's going to be a great blessing to you. Let's pray together before we close the program. We learned about taking on the armor of God and the fact that we are in spiritual conflict against the powers of darkness. And I want to encourage you as a believer to walk, to be strong in the Lord, to uh, take on the full armor of God. And remember, no matter what the devil throws up against you, you can stand and you can be victorious because God always causes you to triumph in Christ. I want to pray a prayer of victory and blessing over your life. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for everyone watching. And God, even as your word says, that if we take on the full armor of God, we will be able to stand against all the wiles of the enemy. That we will be able to stand even in the evil day. We will keep standing. And I pray, God, for that victory. I pray for that blessing upon those watching, God. That they will be able to stand and live victorious lives as believers, knowing what is theirs in you and uh, triumphing, overcoming, every scheme of the enemy. I pray this blessing, God, on each one. Strengthen each one, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. Probably uh, some kind of a hunk of a guy because, you know, that time he had this long hair. Uh, 
hippie kind of look. He's very organized and disciplined. So that's not weird. Uh, that is not weird. That's so like, that, it, it's that's like, like the best you uh, can expect. <laughs> Obviously, her like picking up the fight. <laughs> oh ho! <laughs> really? I think she's very patient. So normally, even if I pick up a fight, she forgives. Both are equal. Sometimes it's um, it's mom and sometimes it's dad. Uh, there are times when I'm like I'm beating myself. I I ought to do this. I should have done that. You know. But then when I look at them, I'm like, I mean, I've got a bigger father. So why worry? So that's one thing which I've learned from the kids. We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like mp3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us.